everybody nice to have you here today i want to make a small intro into the builder and show you how easy it is to create a new microservice for your adobe commerce system um, and for that i will not spend a lot of time and i will directly jump into the showing it to you one small disclaimer i recorded this video but i forgot to hit the record button <laughs> uh means i have a screen recording and i will run it now with all text behind it but you will not see me there i hope it's okay and you will survive without me so enjoy it and see you in the end so uh when you want to create a new a builder application you have to go to this url the developer adobe com slash console or it's console point adobe point io all links as usually you will find in description here you will have this uh, button which uh, states create project from the template. You have to see this one exactly because if you will just click create new project it will not create the, a builder application because it will not include uh, runtime IO and all other features which a builder has out of the box. Um, and uh, I uh, been asked very often uh, by the people that they don't have this button here means you don't have permission to create a builder applications and to solve this problem you need to ask the permission from the account owner and usually he will go to adobe console adobe.com uh, under this account and then will grant you the developer access you have to have the, not product but developer access and in this case you have adobe io runtime here as an access so in this case you can create then a builder applications. So that's quite important point. Don't forget about it. Um, so let's do it. Uh, we'll create a new project from template as only template for now here is a builder. And then you create in some demo project. In my case, it's number three. Um, don't forget you need to include Adobe Runtime which is workspace and by workspaces by default you have production and stage you can add as many others as you want to it can be quite comfortable again if you have big developer team you want to create different workspaces for different uh, testing scenarios development scenarios and so on so and at this point uh, you're done so I guess I can cut off this video already and uh, because at this moment you already created the new a builder application or Adobe Commerce microservice. So let's make a small overview of what you see here. You have here the two workspaces, that's what we created, production and staging. And here the way you can switch between them or you can just click on one of them and go inside that's a configuration of your environment um, by default here nothing here so it's uh, like a clean application you can already use also here you have this download all button download all button download the configuration of this current workspace you may need it for different purposes one of them is for example configuring adobe io uh, events for adobe commerce Another one, it's uh, when you initialize a project locally and you want to tell which project you are using, you may need this file. Um, also, you can here add services and APIs. That's like a, let's call it as a features for your microservice. Let's make a short overview of the APIs so you can make it available for you. It's all Adobe services has a different set of APIs and if your license has an access to them, you can just see them here and use them. That's what's making it so attractive for developers. If, especially if you're using with a different Adobe services so they're all more or less connected to each other and you can use different APIs from different services uh, to work with a uh, uh, single application. What's like very often used by me, it's Adobe Commerce with Adobe ID. So that's an admin uh, login for one of the videos I created uh, in the past. Adobe IO events for Adobe Commerce. So that's an event that's video that will be pub published soon in the future. Uh, API Mesh, 
um, uh, Adobe IO events in management API. So that's those two uh, been used quite often. And yeah, that's it, I guess. Also, you can, uh, sorry, you can create events here. So you can imagine that the whole Adobe infrastructure built on events and you can subscribe to different events that happen in different systems, listen to them and perform some actions. For us, which is uh, mostly used is commerce eventing. So that's an event that's been caused by your Adobe commerce system. And I will talk about this in the next video. Um, and in this case, you can subscribe, subscribe to event and then uh, let's say on product being saved on your Adobe Commerce 1 to 3 and then do some actions for example send the web hooks or make some actions with the product data and so on that just giving you one example so yeah um, let's uh, show how to get the code base of your application and it's one very simple command uh, you have to use Adobe IO CLI tool and after you get it installed, you can just make a your app in it. And it will start initialization by fetching first your organization name, then fetching the list of the project you have within your organization you have an access to. So that's our demo project three. Then it's asking you which template you wanna use because now you just initialize in it. So you don't have a code yet, it does not exist. And Adobe has a lot of templates you can use. There's like a template you can go through. I haven't done it yet with all of them. So we just start with the default one. And then it will ask you if you wanna have actions, events and web assets be pre-compiled or like have a sample code of those all. So I would say yes, let's have a look how it looks like. You may also have some type of actions you want to work with. So again, there are some templates you can use. Let's use generic. And then if you want to have React Spectrum interface or pure HTML CSS. Then asking you for the naming. If you have any custom, I would keep generic, default event. And then it's generating the code. One important note is that um, the Adobe is not providing the Git storage. You just now generating the code and then you have to put it in your version control and then work with it from this version control so it means now after generating it and if you will delete it from a local environment you will not have it anywhere and you need to do the same operation again uh, yeah that's how it is so we are done let's have a look on what we've got um, we have here the module that's your microservice code which is pre-generated with very default configuration and there is your actions which are controllers in Adobe Commerce world so you can create a new ones you see it's all JavaScript um, you have here node modules yes that's uh, the vendor folder if I can name it so you have front-end controllers so that's your HTML file and then your JavaScript that's uh, yeah, where you can do whatever you want, basically. The important files, additionally, you have its IEO. That's what you need for every project, which is usually generated. If you don't have it, you can uh, initialize it. Uh, and it's, the system will create it for you automatically. That's information about the project and about the services you're using on a project. And then environment, which is file with all credentials. Uh, so that's kind of your app etc and PHP and this one is similar to app etc config PHP then you have your app config YAML that's a configuration of your actions and uh, your package JSON where you can add a new node modules and so on so again if we compare it with Adobe Commerce composer file and that's it so at this point you have an application ready you can do it uh, you can run it and uh, in this case it will run it locally for you so it will deploy it on local server um, one node all actions uh, technically will not be deployed on your local they will be deployed on Adobe Commer or on Adobe cloud uh, means you so you have you see two URLs here one is a local host 
and that's application so you can already use it if I'll clean some action here you will see that uh, there's some errors here because it's run on your local server and you don't have the scope of your Adobe account if you run it's an experience cloud that's you see looks the same but you are on experience cloud scope so you have your account you logged in and then if you run the default action you'll have already some other error which is not an error and success response from the API yeah I mean as the next steps I would say you're doing the sections I described and then you start to research and learn the code and create in the new one uh, from the scratch and build in the actions you want to build so that was it thanks a lot uh, for watching if you have any questions feel free uh, to drop them as usual i'll try to help you uh, hope you haven't missed me too much uh, during the screen recording session and uh, we'll see you in the next videos bye bye